classroom of the elite becomes a visual novel with season three, episode three. What do you mean visual novel? Let's see what Brandon has to say. Now I'm going to say something I don't really feel like many are going to agree with, and that's fine. But something I've always been kind of scratching my head with is classroom. Of the elite is a very interesting anime in the way that it feels very different than a lot of shows. And that's not just because it's like, oh, how's it different? The mental games, the psychology, the dialogue at play, what? Oh. It's super complex with the dialogue, so it just makes you think more like, yeah, sure, yeah, that can be sure. true. But there's a vibe about this that you don't feel about something. And that now kind of makes sense to me. And that What is that something? Classroom of the Elite kind of feels like a visual novel. And In that you have a bunch of dialogues and you have like, do you choose this or that and you go one direction or not? Okay, let them cook. What I mean is that anyone who's played through like an actual visual novel game, it doesn't matter what, whether it's a dating sim. What kind of visual novels is he playing? Hmm? Hmm? Don't want to show me in your Steam trade? Would he be hiding the type of visual novels that he's playing on his Steam? Whether it's like a, you know, a Steins Gate, it doesn't okay. matter exactly like what you're essentially doing. The way things happen in a visual novel are very... It's very like scenario based, right? There is already a predetermined um, scenes coming and you obviously can choose some different dialogue options, A or B. But sometimes even then it's like, um, so I, I forget what it's actually called. But basically, you see two doors, and you don't see where it's going. You just see two open doors, and you can choose left or right. But they both converge into the same path, meaning the option you took didn't matter. Very calculated, like you as the player are controlling your MC, and while the MC might have crazy development, you almost navigate the whole world and move everyone like chess pieces, like pawns, to be manipulated. And well, I mean, that's what Odyssey does, right? Odyssey and Koji, even everybody's talking about, oh, chess scene incoming, chess scene, right? And while I've always made the comparison that, like, I know Koji kind of manipulates this world like a chessboard. Yeah. An episode like this has finally made me click in that, to me, Classroom of the Elite feels like a visual novel. And I think when you consider the fact that the novels are so meaty that apparently we be skipping 75% of novels when Pretty much. in Classroom of the Elite. It just feels like a source reader telling like, hey, when I played this 150 hour video game, uh, basically we only cover three hours worth of it just cause it's impossible to adapt. And I'm like, wait a second, I might be onto something. I think this is gonna be the main topic of today's video, I gotta be honest, but okay. I have to say Classroom of the Elite- a Lethal weapon, Yamagod. It's actually starting to feel like a visual novel turned anime and I don't say that as a bad thing. Now, I do have a full live reaction to this latest Classroom of the Elite episode over on my Patreon. So if you would like to check him out, the guys, over there if you're interested. go to his Patreon. Now, like I said, this is very interesting because I know Koji is a very interesting character. He's a very calculated character. And in a lot of ways, feels like he's someone, like when you play a visual novel, usually the end goal, like some people will just go completely blind into them and be like, okay, I do have an idea of how I want this game to end, but they won't know like certain flags they need to set and this, that, and the third. But there's also plenty of people, like, when starting, they're like, listen, there's, like, 15 endings to this bad boy. I'm going to make sure I, I know of the different flags I need to set so characters will move okay. in certain ways. And I swear to God, Anokoji is kind of the boy who feels like he's read a wiki somewhere because the way he be manipulating everyone... He's already fucking metagaming. He already knows all the different fucking spe the endings and the special endings. ...one to fall into place the way he needs feels like a player trying to get to a certain end result. And I think... Or it, this is the result of... You know, a writer, an author, writing this character, Anokoji, who is playing this mental psychological game with a bunch of different people. But at the end of the day, it's not Anokoji making these decisions. It's the author. The author already has an end goal in mind. Now, the way he writes, he must now make it look like Anokoji is making these decisions to get to point A to point B. So I feel like this is just an inevitable byproduct of the author writing a character like Anokoji again, making him seem very smart, moving all these different chess pieces, but at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, he just, we're basically reverse engineering, you know, we have the end goal in mind, so how do we get Anokoji to get there? It's all these different chess moving pieces. I feel like, again, it's, it's, it's just the nature of the, the, the show, right? I think what's interesting is that, as I've been saying throughout many videos, even prior to the season is that this is a very difficult show to adapt because there's so much content people be telling me that if we properly pace things the way some source readers want we'd be at like season six or something to get to where we're currently at and i would have no 
complaints about that. I would love it if you gave me more class when you really fuck it. If season one was split core, 24 episode season, and like, I don't care. Just give me more code. I don't care. I don't care about rushing ahead to get to the latest new content. Just give me a well paced, all the content involved, just execute it well. But yeah. you know, it's that's not gonna happen. Well, sometimes things do feel rushed or out of place. Now, I don't know how people are feeling about this episode. I didn't really take a look before I got up here to record like I did last week. I assume things are probably rushed for many source readers, but this is already much more- More, wasn't people saying that like, this episode was like really well paced and there was not much skipped or am I crazy? Interesting intro hook because while I didn't dislike the first two episodes of the season, I don't really think there was a lot to really focus on. Like there might be characterization and stuff, but in terms of an actual setting, it wasn't that that like crazy or thought provoking it was like oh we've kind of seen different things like this before i'm interested to see where we're gonna where we're gonna go now and i already think like the each no stuff is probably way more interesting than anything that they were establishing in the previous arc other than the monobu stuff and like the Nagumo, Nagumo stuff, stuff. Like, that yep. stuff was really interesting yes. and, and that's obviously carrying into this next arc and probably many arcs to come unless they resolve it somehow quite quickly which seems unlikely unless they really did that Sonic the Hedgehog speed running through the source material don't do but that I like the idea of how rumors in the schools can spread I like the idea that you never quite know who's spreading the rumors huh who is spreading all the rumors could it be truly Arisu's left-hand woman you know that girl that says that Arisu works me to the bone or is it Yama God? Because if you, if you think about the order of events of what happened last episode, the Ichinose drama didn't really start going crazy until Arisu, quote unquote, went on a date with Yamauchi, you know? Now, I'd, I'd like to think that Yamauchi has somehow been convinced to spread these rumors for Arisu because Arisu's like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll go out with you if, you if you do these things for me. And I could totally see Yamagod doing that, which is... <laughs> fucking so stupid so dumb but you know i just hope that he's not expelled because i haven't seen like we see yamauchi get abducted by arisu in the beginning of the episode then we don't see him anymore <laughs> it's like what the fuck and the funniest shit is that the rumor being spread is not a regular high school drama rumor a regular high school drama rumor will be like oh ichino says slept with this different guy while she was dating this dude oh she's such a slut you know it'd be like pretty shallow superficial rumors like that but no, these rumors are Ichinose is a straight up criminal, lock her up. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? Know what's the end result or what you know a character like Ano Koji should do because I mean he's pretty much of the belief right now to do nothing which might work out but I mean the way class A targets class B and if you interfere then class C might end up also getting some repercussions just exactly there's no point us getting caught in the crossfire it's better for us to just wait and let Ichinose get crushed by Arisu so then we automatically then get placed to class B then we can take out Arisu like that I think it's short-sighted though can we truly not like, Aono Koji straight up countered Suzune's proposal to team up with Class B right now to take out Arisu. And I Aono Koji, his lazy excuse was, that's too idealistic. It's like, what do you mean? That's a bullshit answer. Like, you need to give me more details on why it's idealistic. Are you sure that we can't team up with, like, this perfect being, Ichinose, so that we can work together to take out Arisu? I feel like that is a totally logical thing that we could do, but he's like, nah, don't care. It's a big mess of a minefield of this school, and honestly, I don't know how anyone navigates this school without constantly looking over their shoulder. But it's very funny when you consider the fact classroom of the schizos everyone just fucking just looking behind like is anyone out to get me yeah, he did have two very different like opinions thrown at him near the beginning of this episode he pretty much gets all like hey i kind of misjudge you you're actually really nice you're not weird oh me chan and then pretty much near the end it's like man you're just so calculating i i'm i'm so well it's because anakoji is not going to show that calculating side to me chan or hiori right now right of course not but in closed doors with susani of course he's going to be able to talk a little bit more you know, the mask is off, right? And I'm like, the difference in the way characters interact with our boy is so great. And I really feel like this is why he kind of feels like a visual novel player. Like, he's not human in the typical sense. Like, I feel like when you look... Well, that's more like white room activities on why he doesn't feel human, right? Look at how a lot of VNs are kind of rope. It's like, even if things are tropey, you're like, okay, this is a character. A lot of times, though, I kind of feel like the MC and them are kind of there to be you, to manipulate. It doesn't even just have to be a dating sim. Like, those are obviously very self-insert because of obvious reasons but a lot of times it's like you craft that character to truly be you to interact the way you want 
and he's just someone just navigating so emotionally he's just like this calculating game robot master, and yep. i love it so much i've always said that classroom of the elite feels very different than most anime basically have a what should be a generic school setting at face value yeah there's the whole point system and there's a, a lot of manipulation but, but the setting is totally he's right like there's this atmosphere whenever watch classroom of the elite and that's why i think that all the memes of classroom of the elite are so funny because Remember, this school setting is so dramatic and serious. It's like the most elite of the elites come here and everybody's trying to fucking get to class A. And, you know, we have these titles like the queen of the school, Arisu, you know, we, we, we have all these different things to set the stage for such a dramatic and serious moment. But then you have meme characters like Yamauchi and Ike doing dumb shit. So whenever, like, for example, Yamauchi took out Arisu in the beginning of season three. That shit is just so funny to me because of the stage that it's already built upon, right? Because now you can say dumb shit like, oh, Yama God crushed fucking the queen of the school because Ayana Koji sent his strongest weapon to do that, right? Of course, that's not the case, but it's just so memeable because it's already so fucking serious. And I do enjoy the sinister, serious tone of the school setting. But a lot of what the characters do or say, like, there's literally a shot in this episode just focused on a girl's ass. There's no reason for it. <laughs> Yo, you should fucking change this cover picture right now. The top right corner picture. Where, where is the fucking ass scene? They did it twice, by the way. Cameraman was literally looking at that third year, the first year of 1A girl, thighs, and then went to the ass, and then went to the thighs. And then went to the ass again, except she was gripping the bed this time. That was some sussy ass shit. Like, she was gripping Anokoji's bed like this while it was focusing on the ass. It's like, bro, come on. It's not even a kinky fan service. Ah, there it is. There it is. Her sitting on the damn bed in the most non sexual way. But bless the visual novel flair to the show, because they do it anyway, because why the hell not? Like, a lot of- Yo, is that a volume- is that a light novel volume illustration? Her fucking ass shot? This just doesn't have to be the way it is, yet somehow, I'm always like, it's not just like here to say, here's a harem being built, or here's this convenient way they're gonna solve something. Usually, there's like, four or five characters scheming and plotting in the background, and I never know what our MC truly knows or doesn't know. And mm. it's so interesting to see how he builds so many connections. Like, I almost forgot about the study group from season two. We still have that going on. How could you forget about Kyopun? But I totally understand if you forgot about Sakura, because Sakura sucks. In season three, he has so many different connections and plot lines brewing. And now we have this, like, thief plot line about pretty much a girl who, I guess, just really enjoyed the thrill. So she stole a can of beer. This shit is so funny to me, dude. This shit is so funny how... Uh... <laughs> She stole a can of beer, then Arisu was watching the entire time. Then Arisu literally just like, she's like running away, dude. She's like running away, and Arisu's like, just walking really fast with the fucking walkie cane. She's like, oh my god, oh my god, she's closing the distance, what do you want? Like, that scene was just so funny for no fucking reason. But it, it, it's all to set up the comparison, I think, of what Arisu said. Like I said in the anime episode reaction to that, Arisu doing this and her saying, oh, you're going to be my first friend at school. No, you are my first tool at school. I'm blackmailing you using these, um, the shop, uh, theft, uh, sorry, the shoplifting case as like a leverage to make you my tool. You owe me. Now you have to work for me, which is exactly kind of what Anakoji also does, right? He always makes people into his tools, manipulates them. And remember, Arisu said that you are a fake genius, right? While implying that she's the real authentic, again, goes back to white room teachings. Ana Koji is like the first, um, he's like an artificially made sociopath, while Arisu is implying that she is genuinely a sociopath without the teachings of the white room, right? I think at least that's my interpretation of what she means. Beer. Doesn't he want to drink the beer? And then ultimately gets roped into being manipulated, having no time for stealing anymore. And then she proves herself with our boy Ano Koji, which so I'm she just forever has the like. You know how she came to Ano Koji to say like, "Can you like um take out Arisu out for me?" Right? She she basically wants Ano Koji to like help, right? So is it all because she's so fucking tired of Arisu making her do shit because of this one fucking shoplifting incident? So she's like, "This is fucking annoying. I don't want to work anymore." This is bullshit. Anakoji, can you please take her out? I'm tired of being used as a tool. Little does she know. Now, isn't she our tool? Don't we literally have, like, we could straight up go to Arisu and say, yo, you're, you're a girl right here? This bitch betrayed you. 
Yeah, she's still shoplifting. I feel like, you know, she just went from one handyman to another, and now she might be our tool. I'm curious if he did anything with that beer. Either he put something on it, he did something to it, and that's going to come into play later, or he's hoping she gets caught with it. That's kind of my mindset there, but I don't know. That's a future plot point. <laughs> Stealing the beer scene was just so funny for no reason was it trying to be funny i don't know but that shit was hilarious to me either way i think this is why uh, for myself anyway and i don't know maybe maybe for other anime originals or maybe even a sorcerer be like you know what kind of i, I can see where the anime comparison is coming from because i don't use that as an insult like i just feel like with how complex the source material actually is for this show and the idea of the way they go about manipulating these characters for our boy the set locations and how they linger on certain shots it almost feels like an anime that's adapting a visual novel just doing it way better than a lot of them would and even if there are criticisms among anime only source readers whatever i still continue to say this is one of the most successful anime adaptations that that's the thing light novel readers are angry that the anime skips a lot of shit but at the same time numbers don't lie and i feel like the anime again at the end of the day the light novel audience they are not the target audience for the anime. The anime is doing extremely well in terms of numbers because they know how to adapt their content to meet the demands of the masses who are not light novel readers. Anime onlys for classroom be elite enjoyers, they love this shit, right? Even me, like before I knew about the light novel, I thought season one and two was fantastic. Of course, if you get to understand what's missing, you're going to be upset. But I think the adaptation, as much as people shit on it, it's actually doing a really good job. And if you don't think so, that's your fucking opinion. We have numbers. The numbers don't lie. Is universally criticized for being rushed or the pacing being jarring, yet it only gets more popular with each season. It's a phenomenon. Which like, I why? I really don't know. Because it's good. I mean, there are... Like, I mean, pretty much, like, I've even seen criticism with Overlord being rushed and that got more popular. But there's something about Classroom and the Elite that just be built different with how it continues to get more popular. But for me, it's like an episode like this, I just, I was zoned in. It wasn't immediately exciting in the traditional sense. Like, nothing was really exciting about this episode. But it doesn't matter because this anime is based on the character interactions and dialogue. So even if there aren't exciting fighting moments, exciting, you know, crazy shit going on, the dialogue carries. So even just like people just sitting in a room and talking, it's just so interesting, right? That's the beauty of Classroom Real E. And that's also another reason why they don't need to spend so much production you know, budget onto animating these scenes because they're just fucking talking, right? And it's still good. But it had me glued to see where the character interactions would go and why a boy was so gun ho to go out into a hallway that was definitely a trap trying to uh, manipulate him because, of course, this girl who's never talked to you wants to date you, you dumb bastard, but that's my vision. Oh, out. I, I zoned out for a second there. What, what, what did he just say? Gun ho. But it had me glued to see where the character interactions would go and why a boy was so gun ho to go out into a hallway that was definitely a trap trying Oh, he's talking about Yamagon! He's talking about Yamauchi! <laughs> To uh, manipulate him because, of course, this girl who's never talked to you wants to do it, you dumb. No, we've talked. We talked. We risked her, remember? We kicked her cane. Yamauchi went to help while EK gave the fucking side eye like that to Arisu on the fucking ground. And Yadis like, no, it's okay. I'm okay. I'm going to leave now. Yamauchi's then so was like, hmm, Arisu is pretty much a cutie, but she's kind of a klutz. While Arisu could hear this. And EK's like, you fucking idiot. You're the one that kicked the cane! You don't even realize! And that's the beauty of Yamauchi. He doesn't know. He's so unaware, but he's so fucking confident. What a fucking dumbass. I love him. Dumb bastard, but that's my visual novel turn <laughs> I love it. Now, of course, those are my feelings. Let me know what you thought, especially on my idea of how I look at this show. Like, like I said, you may completely disagree, but that's kind of how this anime feels to me. But let me know what you're feeling down below. I think what he's saying makes a lot of sense about how Ayana Koji feels like a visual novel character because he feels like every decision he's making, he already knows the end goal and he's getting there by moving chess pieces around. I could also counter that argument by saying this story is a work of fiction written by an author who already has an end game in point. He already knows the, you know, the outcome. Now it's all about getting Anakoji to get to the outcome by moving around these chess pieces like he's talking about. But again, these are just things that the author is making up. So is Anakoji actually really smart? Or is the author making him look really smart by doing all these predetermined things? Because again, that's just the nature of the work. I don't know. I feel like he's probably right. Maybe I'm right too. Regardless, this episode, fantastic. Yamauchi, 
The, 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 the Yama God scene is just carried too hard. Bro was straight up like, I'm a lethal weapon, by the way. Fucking goes like this, leaves. And even before that, Yama God literally just like consoles Hirata because Hirata just got dumped, quote unquote, by K. And Yama God's like, ah, buddy, it's all right. It's like, what are you fucking talking about, dude? And he's probably just happy that, you know, K is single now. Bro probably thought that he had a chance with K now that Hirata broke up. This is the beauty of dumb idiots with absolute confidence. This combination of characteristics, again, stupidity with confidence, perhaps one of the most dangerous com uh, combinations in a human being. But guys, please like Brandon's video. Subscribe to his channel if you have. I love his breakdowns and his articulate way of explaining his thoughts. But next episode, this episode was pretty much set up. Next episode, ooh, I think we're about to go to a boiling point.